Regional Director, um, uh, thank you for, um, for this report because I think it is uh, extremely, uh, I mean, I was just listening to the, some of the things you said. It's really the sort of things we have talked about in these past two and a half years. Uh, our main concern, my government's concern, is, uh, is to uh, lift our people out of poverty. And uh, the Human Development Report actually is that report where you are actually uh, pointing out the ways, the inequality, the, the, area, the areas that have been left behind, people who have been left behind, uh, the situation of the minorities, uh, transgender. So um, for me, a civilized society is defined by the way it looks after its weaker section of the population. It is not defined by how the rich people live or how the rich classes, uh, their lifestyle. It is defined by how, uh, how is it planning to reduce this uh, inequality. And then the, the sort of things you, you've mentioned before too, before this report, this elite capture. And it's not just a problem of Pakistan. It is a problem of almost all the developing world. It is also, of course, a, po a problem in the richer countries where you see this uh, incredible situation of about the last time, I think maybe it was the UNDP report, I'm not sure, where about, uh, around about 60 people own about uh, the same amount of wealth as about three and a half billion people on this earth, which are shocking figures because there has to be something wrong with the world order where such uh, inequality exists and such, on one side, such uh, opulence or wealth that can never be spent in 10 lifetimes. And on the other hand, you have uh, extreme poverty. And, and then the, with COVID, which is all it has done is that it has made poor people, whether they're in rich countries or in the poor countries, it's made them poorer. So more and more people have gone below the poverty line. It hasn't affected the rich people. In fact, some of the rich people have got richer during this, uh, this COVID last one year. Uh, elite capture is uh, a problem specifically of, of uh, the developing countries. And um, I was reading the FACTI report the Secretary General of the United Nations has uh, 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 this, he uh, made a panel under him which has come up with this report and it is a shocking report. The report is that every year one trillion dollars leave developing countries into sa tax havens or into, to, into uh, properties in richer countries and that $7 trillion of these poor countries, money laundered out of the countries, is parked in, in safe uh, tax havens and uh, leaving the, the poor countries. So basically, this is, if, if I just look at the world, this one fact is the reason behind this huge inequality in this world and the cause of huge poverty because when this sort of money leaves the poor countries, employment is created in, in the countries it, it, is, it is destined for. So the poor countries are not only deprived of, the, of employment which this money could provide, not only uh, does it also create poverty because this is the money that could be spent on human development, uh, but it also affects the currency. Because when so, so many dollars leave the poor countries, the currency gets affected. And when the currency gets affected and when, the, when it devalues, it causes more poverty or an inflation. So uh, this is a vicious cycle going on. And really, unless uh, something is done about it, I, I'm scared that uh, you will, the richer countries will have to build these walls to keep these immigrants, economic immigrants out who will be trying desperately uh, risking their lives to get to uh, richer countries. So uh, this is the one uh, uh, factor which, in my opinion, is causing more deaths in this world, poverty, 
misery in this world. And unfortunately, the richer countries, there is no incentive to stop this, uh, this outflow from the poor countries of illicit money because they, they gain from it. Now I come to uh, the elite capture in our, um, in our country, in our experience of two and a half years. <clears throat> I'm proud to say that we are the first government that has gone after the cartels. Uh, no one in our history has gone after the most powerful sugar cartel. All it does is it just jacks up the sugar prices. And uh, sh sugar is, uh, is consumer amongst the poor people the most because it's like the dessert of a poor family. And the, poor ch uh, uh, the children in poor families, uh, sh sugar is everything. And therefore, because it's consumed by the masses, Therefore, the, the sort of profits that are made by jacking up the sugar prices by the cartels, and because the cartels are all very powerful and connected politically, so this is the first time a government has taken this step. And we intend to we, strengthen the Competition Commission again to stop this, uh, these cartels from making these mega profits at the expense of the people who actually then bear the burden by, um, because of inflation and they get poorer. Um, the, what I was very proud of this report was the, uh, the uh, performance of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, a province that was devastated when we, in 2013, when we took over the province, it was devastated by the war on terror. There were uh, uh, bomb attacks going on. The people had migrated from uh, Pakhtunkhwa into uh, to Islamabad and other cities because of uh, the danger to their lives and uh, the insecurity. And so it gives me great pleasure to, uh, to have uh, the, 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 uh, what you pointed out, that what the report says, that uh, the, the, uh, the province that uh, reduced poverty the greatest and developed its human beings the greatest was KP. And it has almost caught up with Punjab. So that is a source of great satisfa satisfaction for, for my government. Um, I'm also uh, very proud of the way in COVID during this last one year, the way we uh, came out with this SAS program, and Sanya deserves all the credit for dis uh, disbursing this huge amount of money in the shortest space of time. And when there were no one could say that there was any sort of uh, political type of distribution or there was any, uh, I noticed that in Lebanon people were out in the streets and they felt that the money distributed during COVID wasn't, uh, was distributed on political basis and wasn't equitably distributed. And I'm very proud that no one could say that about us. Uh, your point, Dr. Pasha, that uh, now that we are having probably a, a very scary third wave. In some ways, actually, it is more scary than the, the first uh, wave. Second wave wasn't that bad. So <clears throat> we are going to speak to the IMF because we see disruptions ahead. And all, just when our economy was recovering and all the indicators were, po uh, were, were positive, uh, Unfortunately, now we will have to review the whole situation and a, a new SAS program because the service ind industry has been badly hit everywhere in the world. But in Pakistan, our service industry has been really badly hit. And uh, uh, now with this third wave, we will have to uh, give uh, incentive packages. When we look at what the United States with a population of 330 million it's almost uh, $4 trillion is what they have uh, distributed. And our population with 220 million, we barely, $8 billion was the total uh, incentive package we came up with. So I think it's time for a second package. And we will obviously talk to the IMF. Uh, and I think the, uh, the, uh, the uh, head of IMF, uh, I think she realizes she, I've, I've read a statement, she realizes that this is a very unique situation. And you have to, you cannot suppress demand and you cannot uh, impose conditions when people are already suffering. 
So we will want to, uh, I will personally talk to her and uh, as you quite rightly mentioned, uh, Dr. Pasha, that the UNDP report clearly states that, you know, you have to protect those because people affected are the poor people. The masses are affected by everywhere in the world by, uh, by the lockdowns and the uh, disruption by, uh, the, by the coronavirus. So we will be talking to them and I, I, I look forward to reading in details your suggestions how we can protect um, the most vulnerable section of our society. Uh, finally, all I would like to say is that this UNDP report is, uh, is going to really help us because you have gone into details. We, we talk in theory, but you will now, with uh, all this data you've gathered, this will really help us in um, fine-tuning our policies and the, and the main thing is to protect uh, uh, our poor section of the society. And also uh, the regional disparity, we're already working on that. Uh, and uh, uh, Sania has been gathering this data, we've covered almost 75% of our population. And we hope to have this data of uh, covering the entire po uh, population by June. And so what we plan to do is then give direct subsidies to people. Once we have this data, and this untargeted subsidy, as you quite rightly pointed out, it's utilized by those people who don't need it, and, uh, and the people who need it are actually are deprived of it. So we now, are, once we have this data, then we will be able to directly subsidize that section of the population that's vulnerable, whether it is in the rural areas or in the urban areas, different types of uh, subsidy to the small farmer and then to urban consumer, who's facing inflation, we will then uh, uh, be able to directly help them in their basic uh, 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 foods, foods uh, uh, which they consume, uh, you know, the basic stable diet, we will be able to directly fund them because unfortunately it's, uh, it's the commodity prices are rising all over the world because of uh, the COVID disruption of the supply side. So we will be able to uh, protect these people by directly subsidizing them and that's why this data is, is extremely valuable for us. So I want to again thank everyone and I, I want to say that this really will help us and um, UNDP has done a tremendous uh, job which uh, is beneficial to us and I'm sure that such reports would benefit all the uh, developing world. All, all the countries would, uh, would uh, benefit from this report. So thank you, Dr. Pasha, thank and thank you everyone.